Good morning, church. <laughs> Another week. I'll tell you, here at the Trail Edge Church family, we are, uh, we're in some discussions. I, I was asking some folks, should we not have announced the grand plans for what we were wanting to do the 2nd of May when we had this plan of bringing the big tent in and we would meet outside and folks that we haven't seen in over 400 plus days would be able to come and we could be together and and we we began that but uh, I think I was looking at the record here uh, out of the last four Sundays I think it is we've been outside once and it was pretty windy and cold that day and looks like today we're not going to be meeting outside with the wind and the and the cold temperature and some rain forecast. So maybe we never should have announced it at all. I don't know. I'll just tell you this. It is good to be together this morning regardless. Whether it's virtually online or if we're going to be inside later here uh, physically at the tri -Lakes Church of Christ. Whatever it might be. Good to have you. Welcome if you're new especially. Welcome. I've come with a challenge this morning for us to hopefully grow in our understanding uh, from God's word with this question. Uh, do we need reminded to remember? What about you? I don't know about you, but for me, I need reminded to remember constantly. Every single day, I, I cry out to the technology gods to help me in my inability to remember things. And, and there are lots of solutions offered through technology, uh, different reminder things for calendars and the like. But especially, I've noticed uh, this help that comes for, for my broken memory device in my mind. Uh, I, I'll go to my iPhone. Uh, they have all kinds of options there to set different alarms during the day. It's awesome. So I'll set an alarm anytime I have an appointment or someone calls and says, hey, can we get together and talk at this time? Or, or if I know I need to call somebody at this time, I can go to my phone and set the alarm. And then I go about, as usual, and doing my business through the day. And, uh, and as I'm going through, the phone alarm will ring. And I'll just say, that is so awesome. That's my reminder. And then I say, what was I supposed to do at 9.30? I know it's 9.30, but what was I supposed to do? I don't remember. And isn't it true that sometimes, maybe not you, but I, I know of many folks, we just don't remember so good. Sometimes we just forget. We forget what conversations we're in. I'm not sure about you, but I most certainly do. We, we forget all kinds of different things. We forget what we were doing. We forget why we went into a room, what we were going to do while we were in the room. We forget, uh, for me, people's names. I, I am terrible at remembering people's names. And to be a minister in a church when there's a lot of people, it's kind of important, I guess, that you know people <laughs> by their name. I'm so glad that we are, are God's people and we are brothers and sisters in Christ because when I see somebody, I can say, hey, brother, how are you? Or, hey, sister, it's good to see you this morning. But if someone would say, now, who is that? I'd say, well, that's my brother or that's my sister. No, what's their name? I said, um, brother. Brother, I, said, I, I have trouble with names, and I was broken uh, with this. I know where, the, where my whole mind-remembering thing got broken on this when I got married uh, to Trish. She, uh, when, when I got married to Trish with her family, she comes from a family of 15. Uh, she's number 10 of 13 brothers and sisters, and so I'm terrible at names. It becomes so embarrassing at times when I need reminded to remember something that I really should never have forgotten, but it happens all too frequently, which brings us back to our challenge this morning. Do we need reminded to remember? And when I think about how bad our, our memory might be from time to time, is, uh, I, I'm reminded of exactly how much God knew about us and this issue of our memories when he created us. He, he knows. He obviously knows that we have a challenge, we have a struggle. Many of us with remembering and God is, has gone to such a great length of, of things that he has done to put things in place to help remind us to remember. 
It seems like almost everywhere we turn in scriptures, we can find God commanding his people to do certain things for one purpose, to remind them to remember. To remember what it was that he just did for them or to remember what it was he just said to them or whatever it might be. Everywhere we turn, it seems, in Scripture, we find people, God's people, forgetting. They forget. And from the Scripture reading this morning from Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're talking about God's people who had just been delivered out of slavery, who had been rescued and, and saved and are given freedom, and they're going to the promised land. And if you remember Moses, after all of that, he's going to take a moment and he's going to warn his people. He's going to warn the people of God over and over again. He says, do not forget. Don't forget God. He'll say, remember what God has done for you. Remember how God rescued you. Remember how God delivered you to the land that he promised. Remember, he says, don't forget. And this story brings out one of my most favorite remedies. God is, is the God of solutions for poor memories. He's going to put things in place. He's going to tell his people, here's what I want you to do. Here's how I'm going to help remind you to remember and in this particular case, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, right after Moses warns all of God's people, don't forget, don't forget. Like when you go in the promised land and it's going to be so good, you don't forget because you're going to have the tendency to forget. I know your tendency. Don't forget God. And God tells Moses, he says, Moses, they're going to forget. And so he tells Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 31, if you get in your Bibles, in verse 19, God's going to tell Moses, here's what I want you to do. He says, I want you to write down the words to this song I'm going to give you. God is going to give them a song. And he says, I want you to teach this song to the Israelites. And I want you to have them learn it so they can sing it. They're to sing it because this song is going to be a witness for me against them when they forget. It's a long song, by the way, chapter 32. And we've talked about this many times, but I believe we can't talk about it enough that we need to write our songs. Songs help us remember. I don't know about you, but I might have difficulty remembering people's name, but I can remember people's names from songs that I liked when I was growing up or today. Songs help us to remember. But this is how God is, is going to remind his people to remember. Sing this song and, and have them learn it. In chapter 32, we get the words. It's a long song, but, but what a perfect plan from God to help remind his people to remember who he is and what he did so that they never forget. What's he say? Sing. Sing it. Sing it. And don't stop singing it today. I believe that's a, a very important tool to help us remember when we sing, to help remind us to remember of how incredible God is and all that God has done for us and is doing for us. We sing. It's so very important. But take a quick journey through God's story and take notes. Take notes of all the different times and all the different things, the remedies, if you will, that God put into place with one purpose, to help remind his people to remember. Take a look from the beginning. Hey, you remember the flood? We talked about it a few weeks ago. What happened afterwards? God brings them out and he puts a rainbow in the sky. What a reminder! I mean, it's amazing how God works with these little things that he puts in place to remind his people to remember. What did he say? He said, listen, every time you see that rainbow in the sky, remember my promise. Okay. And, and so we've talked about the Exodus. And if you remember, God commanded his people to participate in what? The Passover meal. What's he say? He says, I need to remind them to remember all that I've done for them. And he tells them in Exodus 12 and verse 14 that that's exactly what this meal is supposed to do. It's to help remind them to remember. It's going to become a lasting ordinance, a memorial feast. 
to commemorate what I'm about to do for generations to come so that they can remember. Joshua chapter 4, you remember, is there traveling around and they get to the river and it's flood stage and no one can cross. Well, God stops the Jordan River from flowing. He stops it so they can safely cross over. And what does he do? In Joshua chapter 4, Joshua, or God tells Joshua, says, listen, I want you to pick 12 men. Each of those 12, go get a rock. And I want you to carry that rock to the middle of the river and I want you to pile them up. And we say, well, why would God do that? Well, verse 7 tells us these stones are to be a memorial. It's a memorial to the people of Israel forever. A memorial. Why? So that when the kiddos ask, they say, well, what's that pile of rocks doing over there? They can be told by their mom or their dad or their relatives or other people of God. They could say these stones are the reminder for us to remember, to remember what God did on this day when he helped us cross this river. On and on the story will go with memorial after memorial being established by God for one particular purpose. Specifically, he had them put these things in place to remind them to remember, not forget, because God knows he knows all too well. Like he told Moses, he said, Moses, they're going to forget. And you read it and you just, for me, I'm just, it is so unreal. How could they possibly forget such an incredible event? And how incredible God was getting them through that event. And yet we find it over and over, time and time again, people forget. Even with all the reminders that God had them put in place. Reminders to remember, they forgot. Think about what happens in our country tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, our, our country is going to have its own kind of memorial. Uh, it's known as Memorial Day. It's a day when uh, we set aside each year this day so that those of us who are part of this country will never forget. We will never forget the sacrifice of so many incredibly brave men and women who served this country in uniform around the world and who gave the ultimate price, their very lives, so that we could enjoy freedom. And, and, and we could say, oh, well, why do we need a day? To we will never forget. Shouldn't that be the case? We will never forget those men and women who gave their lives for us. Would we ever forget? And I'd say, well, have you looked around our country lately? Uh, I experience this. I share it when I can on, on this particular point to say, listen, I experienced it firsthand as a PA announcer for different sporting events and other events at high school levels and college levels. I announce over at the Air Force for a lot of different events and uh, different things that have happened through the years. Uh, and I experienced this firsthand. I've, I've become painfully aware that in some places, particularly our high schools, for example, the, the whole memorial thing is starting to fade. I will announce, and now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will please, if you're able to stand, would you stand and kindly remove your hats as we pay tribute and honor to this great country we live in and to all the many brave men and women who have served and gave their very lives for us and our freedom. We'll now have the playing of our national anthem and I confess where it gets a little painful today is as I look around, as I'm standing and watching others, sometimes some of them won't stand. That's why I love announcing, especially from the military perspective over at the Air Force. Or I was blessed to be able to announce for the Warrior Games here a few years back when they held them at the Olympic Center. When I'll tell you this, when that color guard comes and, and that, that flag is presented, the instant that flag enters the arena, I don't have to announce, if you will, please stand. I don't have to announce, will you please kindly remove your hats. I don't need to announce what we're about to do. Folks are standing at attention the second that that flag appears. And as they bring that flag out, those people will remain standing at attention uh, for the entire national anthem. And then 
when it's done, there's no clapping, there's no applauding, there's silence because that flag is still there. And they remain standing in that attention until that, that song ends and that flag is escorted back off of the, of the field or wherever it might be. And I tell you, there's a big difference. And why is the difference, do you suppose? Why are some not willing to do these things and to show respect and appreciation? I say because one group is part of the folks that don't need to be reminded to remember. And they know firsthand the sacrifices that it took connected to the flag. While the other group seems to have completely forgotten what was done for them so that they could enjoy the freedom that they have. It's concerning as we, as we look around our country to more and more people, it seems that Memorial Day, in fact, the whole purpose of Memorial Day, a reminder to remember, is nothing more than a three-day weekend to many with a barbecue and some picnics and nothing else. It seems they've forgotten. We apply that to our challenge this morning from God and us as God's people. God knows the importance of memorials to, to help remind people to remember so they never forget. And, and we know that the ultimate memorial that God had established for us for all time came with that ultimate sacrifice of His one and only Son who came to this world, a world cursed by sin, a world of darkness, and gave His life so that we could all be set free from sin. It's known as, as the Lord's Supper. It's known as communion, this memorial that, that God planned to put into place. And it was Jesus, if you remember, who began it during the Last Supper while He was eating with His disciples for the very last time before He would be taken away and be crucified on a cross. If you remember that night, the Bible says he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke bread and he, and he gave it to his disciples and he tells them, take this and eat it. This is my body, which is broken for you. He says, do this in remembrance of me. What is it? Remember. Don't forget. Then after the supper, the scripture says he took the cup and, and he says, take this and drink it. This is the cup and the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. It's a memorial so that we never forget. So we remember. God established this memorial that we participated in. If, if you're in a church service where you are, or, or as we're about to do here virtually online, we participate in, in communion. And we take the bread, we take the cup, and we remember so that we never forget. But then I finish with this. Do we need reminded to remember this sacrifice by which we can be saved? Do you remember? The, the scripture says in, in to Paul's letter to Corinth, he says, whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Here's our so what for the message this morning. Do you remember? Do you need reminded to remember what God did in sending his only son? Every time you, you take a communion, you're proclaiming the Lord's death until he's, He comes. Did you remember this morning when you woke up that as I preach and shout, that, did you proclaim that He's coming today? Was it a thought in your mind? If you remember, it, does your life reflect it? You see, these sacrifices and these memorials are in place to help remind us to remember, but it should be reflected in how we live our lives in appreciation for whatever it was that was done for us. If you remember how much God has forgiven you, does your life reflect it by how much you're forgiving others? If you remember how much God has taken care of you, is it reflected in your life and how much you take care of others? If you remember how much God loves you, is it reflected in your life in how much you love others? If not, do we need reminded to remember so that we can do those things? I love how, how Peter, he will tell the churches in, in his letter we find in, uh, in your Bibles in, in 2 Peter. 
Uh, he's going to send a letter to the churches that's going to talk about life and how we are to, to show our appreciation to God for all he's done and how we live our lives. And I, I love how he goes into such detail of reminding us of how we're to proclaim to the world uh, how much God loves the world. And we have, it says, uh, Peter says, Here's, or, or here are the things concerning how you're to live your lives. In verse 5, he says, you, you have your faith, yes, but to that you add goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. This is how we reflect our appreciation for what was done for us, for what God did for us. We reflect it in how we live our lives. And Peter is just telling them, Here's, here are the things that you need to focus on. And he says in verse 10, be, be all the more eager to make your calling and, and your election sure. He says, because if you do these things, you will never fall. And you'll receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then I love what, what Peter has to say next. He says it in, in verse 12, he says, So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and you're firmly established in the truth you now have. He says, I will always remind you of these things. He says in verse 13, I think it's right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. You understand, Peter, he knows. He knows what God knows. We have a tendency to forget. He says, I will always remind you of these things as long as I'm alive. And that's our so what I want to challenge us with this morning. Do we need reminded to remember? Or are we living lives, as Peter challenged the churches, are we living lives that reflect that we don't need reminded to remember? We are the testimony to each other. We remind each other from the lives we live, and we remind the world that there is a God that loves them and sent his only son to die for them. If you've not obeyed the gospel and made that decision for yourself, I would encourage you to make that decision to confess your sins and confess Jesus is the Lord and Savior that God sent to, to save you and to be immersed in the waters of baptism, to have all your sins washed away and to be added to His family, living your lives and reflecting your appreciation in how you live for what God has done. But maybe you need the prayers of, of family and friends or of the church. And if there's any way we can help you answer any questions, don't hesitate to contact us through the information you'll find on our email. It has our email address and our phone number. But, but may God bless us as we live our lives each day and live them as daily reminders to all, to each other and to everybody in the world of what God did for us. We don't need to be reminded to remember. We will never forget what God did for us in sending his only son to die so that we can be saved. Until next time, keep the faith.